So, do you hear? Me? Yeah, I'm sorry, my uh, mic was still muted. Oh, I just wanted to check if my if my tone works. Jose is coming in a minute. Mark, I think uh, you can start like now. -ish. I mean, uh, the other session has uh, stopped, so sorry about okay. the overfill. No, that's fine. Um, yeah, I think uh, it will be best if I share my screen. Um, Hopefully, it will. Yeah. Would, a, would a pad be useful to take notes? Sorry? Would a pad be useful to take some collaborative notes? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I'll open one and share it to the. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so, um, I think, um, yeah, to start off, um, that um, I set out some objectives, um, which can be uh, used um, throughout the breakout session if you think um, that it can be uh, useful to integrate or uh, to keep in mind um, using the integration. So the, the main goal uh, is to have the IPv6 based connectivity to uh, low power wide area network devices but um, as Juan Carlos um, said yesterday, the fragmentation can also be used uh, separately uh, straight above the MAC layer without any IPv6 uh, compression. So the objectives um, that I had in mind were end-to-end uh, -end security using co-op and OSCOR and um, maybe IPv6 and UDP underneath or uh, Riot on the LoRa 1 gateway or network server, so we can get rid of the MQTT uh, broker there. And the generic framework, so you can have HTTP co-op or MQTT compression or any other protocol, uh, maybe even um, C, um, NDN. And also the uh, fragmentation uh, should uh, work separately from the compression. Uh, so first part is uh, compression. So what I did uh, now is that I added a uh, chic net type. Um, I took some inspiration from the six low pan layer there. However, now um, when uh, I sent a, a packet inside the UDP client. Uh, I have to um, indicate that it's a GNRC net type chic packet um, and it bypasses the GNRC UDP and IPv6 layers. So, uh, as you can see, I have to add all these um, things from the um, protocol stack itself and I'm not sure how this should be done. I think six uh, low pan is included uh, automatically uh, when IEEE 802.15.4 is detected but I think it should be something like this. Um, um, yeah, I don't know anyone any thoughts on this?
so Bart, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, actually, I had some similar problems when I was doing uh, ICN Open, which is basically compression for NDN networks. Mm -hmm. And together with uh, Martin, I don't know if she's here in the call or not. Probably not. Um, we did some yeah, extension of the of the Gina C6 low that you have in your graph there. Um, it probably is kind of uh, hard coded currently in the in the six though, but I could imagine that we can also integrate Genesis C's chic um, at the south and uh, north uh, bound um, net net API calls. You see where Gina C six low six low is. We could probably tell also that we have to use Gina C chic, but um, this needs to be adapted in the code itself. Uh -huh. so it, it is possible. So you shouldn't. I mean, you should not try to build your UDP pick. Um, by yourself no 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 um yeah i but i i'm just um i i will uh share my github fork um afterwards so you can see how i did it um yeah sure yeah, sure, yeah, sure. Um, but i feel yeah it's probably possible but um it's just that i I didn't uh, find the time to see how it should be uh, should be done. Um, but the the next thing there is that um, the fragmentation uh, should also work um, without a compression. Um, so it should, yeah, somewhat um, end up. Here, so you can just send packets straight from the application layer towards uh, the uh, chic uh, parser or fragmentation. I don't know uh, how that should be um, incorporated. I think it's something to keep in mind. Uh, um, So maybe to continue, um, what I think uh, that can be done uh, is that um, yeah, currently in the in the library um, the layers are set at compile time, as you can see, um, and however, um, using Riot. And using the net types, we could, uh, I think we we are able to uh, detect which layers are being used and uh, compile the appropriate rules. Um, as we can, um, as we can uh, find information inside the packets. Uh, so it's also something uh, to look at. Mm -hmm. Maybe um, it's good to um, show you how the rules are implemented currently. So um, every rule contains um, like a field. Um, yeah, the fields, uh, I think they can be, um, uh, I have to change it uh, to enumerations. Um, but um, it's like, um, um you specify uh the target value uh the matching operator and the compression decompression action um and then some other uh configuration values and this rule is then uh, it's uh every um layer has its specific uh struct which um are all um, together uh, inside um, another struct which contain all rules specific for uh, 
a device. So which forms the context of that device? And then if you have uh, a single rule, so for example, the first one, um, you can reuse, um, so let's say it's a not, for, not found for a four co-op rule, you can um, reuse the uh, compression rule to, um, to form a fragmentation rule. So the not fragmented doesn't have any uh, parameters, but the uh, ECOM error reliability mode um, has some extra parameters. And these are all used inside the uh, device uh, configuration. So um, it's something to um, set up at uh, compile time. Um, yeah, so that's also something to think about um, because um, depending on what um, uh, what's inside your application, it's, it, it should only compile the rules that are required for your application. Um, maybe the file system of Riot can be used for that. I'm not too familiar uh, with the Riot file system. So, um, that's maybe something uh, to think about. Um, and then, um, if we know which um, layer is um, being um, is inside the packet, um, it should be fairly easy to adapt to the current implementation, as currently. Uh, inside the uh, compression function uh, you have to call, it calls a, a, a single function which adapts to a specific layer and uh, you only have to, I think these are bit arrays and they can be reused. Um, however, for co-op, for example, uh, it requires a protocol parser um, as um, the delta of the options uh, should be removed and uh, IPv6 and UDP are static headers so they don't really require protocol parser but uh, for co-op for example uh, there is the need for a protocol parser and also not it should be easy to uh, include um, but I'm not too sure how to do it um, with a minimal footprint Currently, I use a Pico co-op uh, protocol co-op uh, parser, which is uh, fairly lightweight, but it and it only provides um, parsing of the headers. But as Riot has uh, co-op implementation, it, I think it will be quite redundant to use um, a separate protocol parser and the uh, uh, G co-op or Nano co-op could be used. Um, and then another thing I uh, uh, I thought about um, was, so if we put the GNRC chic stack underneath um, the IPv6 and UDP stack, um, how will we compress an all score uh, message as it requires um, uh, compression in two steps? So first you compress the um, all score plain text, uh, which you encrypt, and then you will um, um, compress the co-op all score message, which um, you will, um, and then indeed, uh, this co-op OSCOR message can also have a UDP and IPv6 message 
uh, IPv6 header, uh, which you will send to the compressor. So, in short, this should be uh, should should work uh, separately from the from the upper two, or uh, it should be compressed first uh, before sending it downwards. Okay, so I was just looking at uh, uh, questions, but uh, I will get back to it later. Um, okay, so then um, next is uh, the fragmentation. Um, so currently how the fragmentation uh, works is um, you specify the underlying um, properties of your network interface, like the, um, uh, the payload size and the duty cycle, as some uh, low power technologies are operating over the ISM bands. And the device ID of the connection, so the device ID is being used to differentiate between uh, multiple devices on the receiving side. Um, the bit array is used to um, keep track of the um, the uh, original packets, the compressed packet, but can also be uncompressed packet. And then the rule that was used, uh, the rule size in bits, which is a configuration and something what the uh, working group uh, defines in um, profiles. So every um, low power wide area network technology should have a uh, profile in which several um, parameters can have default values. But currently this is, um, I, I, the library doesn't support any profiles, um, but again, should be easy to add. And then you say uh, which fragmentation uh, mode you want to use. So it's also something to consider um, because I think it is up to the application to decide um, which reliability mode you're going to use if you're sending a um, um, just a sensor value. I think the no act mode is um, is better to use and if you're sending a firmware update it's better to use a uh, always um, mode so in this sense um, the library requires information about a network interface and yep, a per packet configuration for um, the mode and then finally um, inside the uh, uh, chic fragment function is a, um, a state machine um, and the connection so every device has a connection um, inside the connection several parameters are um, stored to um, keep track of the state of the the fragmenter um, and yeah, so that's something to consider. Then next thing um, is the, like I uh, introduced yesterday, is the use of the, is uh, the memory management. Um, so it, uh, the library uses 
uh, network memory buffers to store um, the received fragments or to store pointer to the to the received fragments and the um, fragments are just pointing right um, to one another however it might be that a fragment was lost so uh, the linked list should be reordered but in memory it doesn't matter but for the um, network memory buffer it does matter as um, for example um, be because it has to be able to reorder the linked list for the missing fragments because it should be able to uh, calculate the message integrity check without modifying the original header. So what I did is um, the the library works on a on a per fragment basis. So once the uh, the the sender uh, receives a um, bitmap with um, some fragments that were missing it will um, try to retransmit um, those fragments but the fragments are not stored in uh, a separate buffer but they are calculated on the fly so the original packet can be reused to um, to send those fragments so that's why the abstraction between the memory and the network buffers is uh, important. And also um, to be able to um, calculate the message integrity check. So the message integrity check is calculated over the compressed uh, packet. Um, so if every fragment is received, including the fragmentation headers, the fragmentation header should be removed and then concatenated and then the message integrity check should be calculated. So currently um, the fragmenter is able to select to take a single payload byte from the chain and then use this in the message integrity check calculation without modifying the received buffers. So, um, yeah, that's how it works, um, more or less. Um, yeah, that's something I said too. Um, and then I think indeed uh, packet snip can be used for this. Uh, I didn't really look very deep into it yet. Um, but, um, uh, I think with packet snip, you can just pass the original packet. Um, and then the uh, library can just take data from it um, and work uh, with those buffers. And then also packet queue can be interesting i think it's also something to consider as if you if you have a gateway um, that keeps track or the receiver keeps track of the uh, maybe it's also something to think about um, if you have a re the receiver um, the, the the packet queue for a receiver is not that interesting as it probably won't be sending um, very large um, chunks of data. However, the um, the gateway um, should be able to queue packets um, as, um, for example, if you have a LoRa 1 class A device, then um, the packets uh, should be queued and only after an uplink transmission, a single fragment can uh, go to the other, to the, uh, to the sensor nodes. So I think the packet queue can also be, um, should, should be incorporated inside the device configuration as you also have to be able to differentiate between different end devices. And 
that's something um yeah so things that should be configured are the rules of the device and um then also the the fragmentation um parameters and also how the um packet queue um will behave so um, packet queue is tied to an IPv6 address or will be tied to a, to a device um, ID or EUI because also the device ID which I showed previously um, it's it's an abstraction which I made uh, because a single device could be using multiple technologies um, and a single device ID can be tied to multiple device EUIs um, if you're using LoRa or if you're using uh, Sigfox or um, so that's why it's using a device ID um, but I think the specification um, is just taking data from layer two uh, the EUI from layer two and maps it to uh, the and we'll try to find it in the in the rules so um yeah that was more or less uh what i was thinking about i don't know if it was uh, more or less clear um if you have any uh remarks or questions then uh Uh, a very small question from my side. So, I guess Libshik will be integrated as a package in, in Riot, or what you plan, right? Yeah, um, the idea is that, that uh, the library can still be uh, used uh, without Riot. Mm -hmm. uh, so, currently I integrate it as a package, um, but I also set up a module. So. I, I'm, I'm not sure if this is the the right way to do, but um, it's um, yeah, it's 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 working. But um, and I think you can you can also create an ab abstraction inside GNRC, um, which calls functions from the from the library. Um, um. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Yeah, um, I'm not sure if this was uh, mentioned because I had connectivity issues here uh, with process. <laughs> but uh, I. Sorry, I think I lost the question. Hello, can you hear me now? Got another? Yeah, I can. Okay. Yeah, basically, um, I'm not sure if you mentioned regarding the Mac layer below. Uh, what could be the plan to to integrate it to to Riot? I mean, which of the implementations have, have you checked? Uh, yeah, I mean, for instance, six low plan is integrated on top of uh, Junior C ninety fifteen point four, which uh, implements uh, part of the Mac layer there. Uh, have you checked how you would do it on Riot? Which implementation you would use? um no i didn't didn't really check um which layer is is uh six loop and using uh basically it connects on top of tuner if 15.4 yeah sorry. so basically so, then there is a 15.4 framing layer that takes the the fragment from six loop and uh, on tuner if but basically, my question is because uh, there is some work on the generation integration for LoRa One. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, it's only implemented for GNRC LoRa One, which is a custom uh, Riot stack. But uh, in theory, it should be possible to also integrate the, the other implementation uh, to GNRC NetIf. So that means it would be possible to uh, use uh, 
the step like yeah, she yeah. compression so, on top uh, of whatever is implemented on Jenner if uh, Laura one for instance uh, um, yeah so uh, we, we have uh, um, so, so if I understand correctly then um, the the um, um, the the adaptation layer should be able to detect which uh, Mac layer is is using underneath uh, you mean uh, no, but basically I mean that if we define a generative uh, uh, LoRa one, which is now defined only for a generative LoRa one, in theory it's possible to just plug something on top. Like uh, and you just auto initiate uh, Chic on top of it. Yeah. No, don't use Chic. But just it should run. It should run with the six low band. I I think that's what you're proposing, right? Uh, yeah, but basically, like mimicking the what is in the uh, generation of the 15.4, or there's a generation 6 low on top. Basically, we can just reuse the uh, generation of LoRa 1, and then we could basically yeah. just send the LoRa 1 packets out of the box using generation. Yeah. yeah, I think that's what 6 low is doing now. If it detects IEEE 802.15.4, then it just automatically loads 6 low pan, right? 6 low pan is just a header compression. Uh, like there are lots of different header compressions and and to me the question is like that's one compression scheme and then there were two other compression what or three other compression schemes and what's the difference like uh, like between uh ip between header all of them between all of them <clears throat> like why is, uh, okay. why is one better uh, than the other they just look a little different slightly um like, uh, i yeah i think um IP header compression and next header compression, they can only compress, uh, no, they, they can they can compress quite well, um, but the uh, fragmentation layer of six low pan um, requires a um, minimum of 13 bytes, which is not able to transfer over Sigfox. Um, so, that's something that that she can cope with as you if you set up your um, compression headers correctly then you should be able to compress your headers down to a single byte um, but yeah they they, they look um, they do something um, similarly but chic has been designed to be um, really, really efficient. Um, and that's also why it, it, it works on bit level. I don't think that six low pan compression works on bit level. Yeah, but also there, like, I mean, uh, I'm not an expert on six low pan uh, compression, but if the header is around 30 bytes, uh, basically, in several data rates of uh, LoRa one, where well, they have 56 bytes uh, failed to send, and of course, if if the whole hair compression takes uh, around 30 bytes, and uh, we could always send uh, 20 bytes of payload, which is uh, could be complicated for big IP six packets. Yeah, indeed, and I and I think I'm also not really six low pan compression expert, but. I think if you start um, the, um, I think first when you, when you're transmitting a packet, you first have to define the destination and and the source, uh, which will yeah have a have a typical IPv6 overhead of so the the 120 28 bits are um, sent to the other side. So it's something which is quite overheadish for uh, LoRa and uh, other uh, low power technologies, I mean, low power wide area network technologies. I have a question regarding the, uh, the um, co-op uh, integration. Um, I, if, I, if I understand correctly, you are passing the packet on send. Would it would it make sense to just integrate the, uh, the writer, uh, the shik into the writing library? So 
that the uh, that the outgoing co-op request from the co-op API is already compressed, so is it impossible to do it like that? Um, yeah, I think it's perfectly possible. I think it would be would make it um, so. Then it would mean that the um, the part below the GNRC uh, chic part will only uh, check if it's a UDP or an IPv6 packet, and and it will ignore the uh, co-op. Um, the problem is that. Um, the the um, the compressor assumes that it is a um, it assumes that it is a complete protocol stack. So um, if it has some um, remaining bits from the first layer, then it will uh, concatenate um, bits from the second layer to the first one. So you should be able to pass um, the like a chic structure to the to the next um, to the yeah to to the to the final um, compression part, but should should be able to do it. But then you should be able to pass uh, the uh, the bit buffer to the to the next one in line. And uh, the, the way you have integrated it is it, um, like agnostic to the underlying uh, uh, foo? Would it just or is it currently tied to, to Laura? Uh, no, currently I just um, um, specify the. Um, yeah, it's also something that should be done, I think. Uh, where is it? Um, yeah, so currently um, the, um, the packet is passed to the, uh, to the, to, to the chic layer um, and it can get information from the network interface um, and depending, I don't know how the network inter interfaces are uh, implemented, but I think if the network interfaces uh, contain information about the uh, maximum payload size and... They do, yeah, they do. Can I, a net opt option for that. Yeah, and I, then I think um, it you can just um, adapt the MTU to the, mm -hmm. uh, to the net opt of the uh, network interface. <clears throat> Got the question from my side, and sorry if I repeat, uh, I was off the table for a second. So, do you know if the AP1 group considers dynamic loading of, of rules? Um, Currently, they um, they say that the uh, rules, um, yeah, it's out of the scope of the of the RFC, how they are uh, distributed. Um, so they assume that they are offline picked. So, uh, which is still a big issue, um, but it's something that we are looking into uh, on. Uh, how they can be configured uh, remotely. So, in, in I don't know what the future plans are of the the rule configuration, but um, 
Yeah, that's why I think uh, the file system of uh, Riot might be interesting. Um, something that I was thinking about was to use ICMPv6 messages, such as in um, RPL, uh, where you can um, um, uh, where you can um, add a single uh, rule field to a uh, rule. Um, but it's, yeah, it's something that's still um, not specified yet. Um, yeah, I think it's, um, I don't remember which, uh, of which, but it, it was, um, no, it's not the, I, I think you mean, uh, the six go compression, uh, messages. It was really more like, um, a try to, uh, see how we can define a new ICMPv6 message. Um, and I just took some inspiration from RPL, but it's indeed um, not. Um, but it's not there yet. It's just something that we're thinking about. Um, yeah, if there are um, more, no more questions, and maybe I think I, I will try to, um, maybe it should be something that I, um, so just, um, Added um, the uh, my GitHub repository where I uh, added the uh, library to it. So uh, it might be interesting for you to uh, check out. Um, but um, I was still updating it. Yeah, it's indeed um, typically a start apology. Um, um, I was also looking at uh, neighbor discovery, um, which indeed might be sufficient, but the, the, it depends what, on, on what you're trying to achieve. It's um, if you want to be able to uh, connect to different networks, then uh, you should be able to configure um, more than, than than just the IPv6 address and destination port. Um, but yeah, it depends on 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 the current architecture. Should be um, with the current architecture. Uh, neighbor discovery should be sufficient, but suppose you want to roam between, uh, if you have a logistics use case and you want to roam between um, different uh, LoRa one networks, um, then it might be useful um, 
to configure more than um, just the IPv6 address. But yeah, it's still something uh, we're thinking about. That's uh, exceptionally interesting. Looking, looking forward for your PR. Sorry? Uh, certainly interesting, interesting stuff here. Yeah. Looking, looking forward, looking forward okay. to PR. Yeah, Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know if someone has anything uh, to uh, to add to it. Um, then I think I can stop uh, sharing. Yeah. Can you send me? Uh, I mean, send you an email, but can you send me the slides that you were using? Yeah, sure. Uh, <clears throat> so I took some some tried to take some notes, but then I was uh, distracted um, um, on the pad. Well, the circuit uh, disrupted is more the <laughs> right term. And um, where is this pad? So, um, Emilien, yeah. I don't know if you, uh, I added the links to the different pads to the main uh, breakout session pad, the one you sent yesterday. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, so, yeah, I put the link to the K-Config session. I, uh, I don't know if there is a pad for this session, but uh, if there yeah. is one, we can. Yeah, there was yeah. a pad, but like, uh, <laughs> uh, basically I started it and then uh, posted it, but then, yeah, it wasn't very much used. Uh, um are you uh are you happy with the the, the session Bart? um yeah i think it's um um it's there's still a lot to do but um hopefully um people will start to play around with the library and um yeah, it's nice to see that there's interest in the in the subject. So hopefully um, we'll get something out of it. <laughs> uh, Bart, it's uh, and uh, I'm sorry, I, I was a little bit like uh, uh, disrupted, so I had to leave the session. So I, I don't know. Maybe this is uh, this question was already answered, but like, um, 
um, you're you're already using this library, right? And like uh, so, even even uh, what what's what's the first the first step to get to an example that would use that, even if the integration is not. Uh, uh, as optimized as it would, it should be uh, inside Riot, like uh, like an example. Of, uh, yeah, uh, that. like uh, in uh, I don't know if you uh, in the in the chat here of the breakout session, um, there is a, a fork of Riot in which I included a GNRC chic um, example, which you can run natively. And then you can start a UDP server on the um, on the one uh, tap interface, and the other one can send a packet to the other one. Um, and it, they're just raw um, Ethernet packets um, sent using a broadcast. And um, yeah, then you can test and see how how um, how it how it uh, behaves. But um, I was testing this morning, and uh, there is still a small issue. So the, the the sending works, but the receiving doesn't. So I will try to look into it this afternoon, but should be fixed by uh, tonight. And you can uh, try and see how uh, it works, and then we yeah, you can start playing around with it, and we can see what uh, where we go from there. So uh, this feels like a really nice. Uh, uh uh, candidate for a, a whip, uh, whip working PR uh, that could uh, like be beyond like this uh, breakout session uh, could uh, already uh, you know uh, uh, have again a little more exposure uh, inside the community. And, mm -hmm. uh, if you label like the, your PR as whip and like you already say you know like you say like what's working, what's not working, and like next steps like it's, it would already be. Like may, maybe like gain uh, slightly more visibility than than a fork. Um, is is that uh, is that something you would be comfortable uh, doing at this stage or? Um, yeah, I think so. I I think it's it's quite stable and and hopefully when more people are using it, um, I don't know how it's usually done in the community. But um, if more people start, more people start using it, then um, um, a lot more issues and bugs should come forward. And um, yeah. So, so yeah, and 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 the and the thing is that I I created it to for for a research project, but um, yeah, it's not used by anyone. So it would be nice to see yeah. it. Um, being used okay and like and in your fork like the this uh, the lip trick is, is a package that you actually like you use uh, right is that that's the way you, you yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah okay. but awesome. yeah. i'm i'm not too acquainted with riot so i don't know yeah it, it's also it also came forward in the in the in the presentation that um there's some things i just don't know if the uh, design approach is is um uh, could show some input from the community. Yeah. So I guess like the then creating a whip PR uh, would would you know kind of accelerate like uh, all this type of feedback. Um, so um, I, I mean I would definitely um, uh, suggest uh, if 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 you have something uh, working um, uh, and an example and like the just like a basic integration of um, uh, the chic as a, as a you know as a as a package and, and can, an example using it uh, PR that as labeling it whip and then you know we'll, we'll get like you'll get all the feedback and we'll actually get to okay to um, this app and then <clears throat> uh, I, I think that would be like the best way forward okay that's uh sounds uh, sounds great yeah. i think i will try to do that this week and then uh yeah, you'll see it in the in the github awesome okay sounds great thanks cool um can you uh shoot your um uh, or is it is it in your slides like the your your uh 
Uh, no, yeah, I will the the fork you mean. Yeah. Uh, I can. Yeah, I will. I will just reply to the email again. Okay. Awesome. <coughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah, nice work and uh, uh, great to uh, looking forward to interaction on that. Uh, yeah, me too. Okay, yeah. I'll send you the slides. Uh, yeah. In a second. Uh, Jose is still in this room. I have a colleague. Kevin is right. Me.